friends, and welcome this evening, tonight, to another night of, as we walk through the Word of God, uh, Wednesday in the Word of God, and we give God thanks and praise for you joining us on tonight. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing, and we are glad in it. I'm excited. I'm excited about the Lord Jesus Christ and what He is doing in this day and time. God is a miracle worker. And I don't care what anybody says or does, God is still working miracles. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. God has not changed. He's the same God. But our faith must now be strengthened because your faith will be tested. And any time your faith is tested, is most time tested for a testimony. And as I always say, one of my favorite words, I repeat it daily. I believe God. I have confidence in God. I believe God. I don't believe he brought us this far just to leave us. And I know that we're dealing with some things now. All of us are facing some things that we want God to do, that we're praying, and we need God to uh, help us. We need God to come uh, uh speedily and do some things and we, we're believing him and I'm praying, I'm praying daily, I'm praying all through the day that God will make some changes in some things that the enemy has saw fit uh, to bring up on the people of God and I'm believing God today. I'd like to begin by praying. I want to pray today and uh, the Bible says men should always pray and not faint and I believe that when we pray God hears and answers our prayers. And it's, it's, it's up to us to exercise the faith that we have. Exercise it. Anything that you exercise will get stronger, will get stronger and bigger. You exercise your muscles long enough, they get bigger and stronger. So let's remember, let's exercise the faith that we have. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, you're our God. There's nobody like you nowhere. We trust you. We have confidence in you. We have faith in you. But first of all, God, we thank you for who you are and for what you're doing in our lives. We never would have made it without you. We never could have sustained. We never would have made it this far without you, God. We realized that it was you. It was not the government. It was not our family members. But God, it was you that brought us to where we are now. And we take the opportunity tonight just to tell you thank you for your goodness, for your mercies. Oh God, you're so good to us. You're so marvelous to us. You're so wonderful to us. We ask you tonight, God, that you would look on uh, the sick, look on those that are dealing with problems in their lives, problems in their health, finances, just in their everyday lives. God, look on them tonight. Let your power be made known tonight through your healing power, your deliverance power, your saving power. In the name of Jesus, look at our bishop tonight. Touch his body from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. And look on those loved ones that have lost a loved one just last yesterday afternoon. And God asks that you touch their bodies, touch their minds, give them comfort, help them to know you're still in charge, no matter what, you're still in charge. God, I pray for everyone today that has a special request. You know the need, you know the desire. And I'm asking you now, God, for a touch. Anything you touch, it changes. In the name of Jesus, touch us all tonight, God. Let us feel your presence. Let us feel your power. In the name of Jesus. I command cancer to go. In the name of Jesus, I do it. I command diabetes to go. I command poverty to leave. Hatred. Strife. Envy. In the name of Jesus. God, I thank you tonight in advance for what you're going to do. Let someone be helped. Let them be encouraged tonight by your word. Your word is quick, it's powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Cuts between the marrow and the bones. 
When God, your word uplifts us. It gives us that hope that we need, that strength, that power that we need. And we thank you in advance for what's about to happen. Bless us tonight, God, that when we leave this class tonight, we'll be encouraged to walk with you, that our faith will be strengthened, and we give you all the glory and praise. It is in Jesus' name, amen. Hopefully your faith went out today, tonight, and that you believe God and that you believe that God hears and answers your prayer. Faith without works is dead. I believe that if we have the faith the size of a grain of mustard seed, we can speak to the mountain and the mountain has to go. So let's exercise that faith tonight. And I want, I want to go back to faith again tonight. I, I want to talk about faith. Uh, I, I'm really dealing on that because there are some things we really want God to do, and it's going to take faith in Him in order to get it done. And tonight I want to talk about speaking victory through faith. Speaking victory through faith. Having the victory and speaking it, saying it, announcing it, pronouncing it through faith. I believe that you can have what you say when you believe God. That's, that's, that, that is such a powerful statement that to make when you say that you believe God. You mean you're saying that I have confidence in him. I trust him because there's nobody like him nowhere. One thing that I liked, I want to go back to real quick is where many times we allow fear to come up on us to make us doubt. Anytime we hear something negative, many times fear will torment us. Fear will make us doubt. Fear will make us not believe that it shall come to pass. But when we have the right kind of faith, we will not fear we will not uh, 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 run, tuck our tails and run, but we'll stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. We must have the reverential fear of God, but not the kind of fear that causes us to shake whenever there is a problem in our lives. Let's talk about what fear really is. Now fear and faith do not mix. Let me let me let's get that clear before I even start. They do not mix. They are not cohesive. They will not mix. They will not come together and bond for one common cause. Fear is a feeling of agitation and anxiety called caused by the presence of Danger, immediate danger. Let me give you an example. If you're afraid of snakes and you see one and you're cornered and there are three snakes standing around you coiled up getting ready to strike, many would fear because you have that certain fear of snakes. Well, the enemy desires for you to shake, to feel agitated, over anxious. One thing about fear, sometimes fear may not hurt you, but it'll make you hurt yourself by running from something that you are afraid of. And there are two types of fear. I mentioned that earlier. There's a reverential fear where you're in awe. In awe toward a supreme power. Uh, uh, uh. But this fear that I'm talking about tonight is the one where you fear your circumstances, fear your situation that you're in, fear the news that you got heard, that you've just heard. And, and many times, and I, I'll say this, I'll say it all the time, 
many times we don't know what it means to experience going through the type of fear with the medical problem until it hits us. And, and, and I, I know that we can, it's easy to tell uh, Sister Buttermilk and Brother Collard Greens to have faith in God, to believe God. If they tell you, well, listen, I've got, I've got a tumor in my neck. It's easy to tell them, oh, believe God. Oh, have faith in God. But can you have that kind of faith when it happens to you? That's the time when your faith is really on trial. Your faith is really being tested to see if you actually believe what you have been talking about. It is, it is my belief, brothers and sisters, that when we have the fear uh, uh, that, 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 uh, that happens to, that when things happen to us, it is my belief that we either fear or we have faith. One of the two. We can't have both of them. We can't be scared and still say we trust God. Because God has not given us the spirit of fear. Brothers and sisters, when we fear uh, a situation or a problem, that problem will torment us to the point where we, many times we doubt whether or not God is going to do anything about our situation. We doubt, uh, uh, brothers and sisters, that 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 uh, that the things are going to get better. We doubt that we're going to get healed. We doubt that we're going to be blessed financially. We doubt that our, that family issue is going to be solved. But when you have the faith in God, that fear goes out the window. And I know many many of us, and I know I'm talking about something that many of us have experienced when it comes to fear because things will come into your life that will shake you in your boots. Problems will happen. They will take place in your life. That's why it's so good to keep your relationship with God strong. What am I saying? Keep your life in line with the word of God and believe God. I'll say it again, I said it Sunday. I honestly believe that we are in the last of the last days. And if we're gonna exercise faith, now is the time that we need to do it. Even your salvation is based on faith. By faith are you saved. You're saved because you believe God. You believe in a God you have never seen. You believe in a God that doesn't walk in your church on Sunday mornings with a three-piece suit on and say, let's have church. But you believe, you feel his presence. You believe that he's there. So it's a faith walk. The Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. Many times, brothers and sisters, we have phobias when it comes to things in the spiritual world spiritual things in our lives. I've seen people afraid to leave their homes because they fear, they fear that someone is going to run into them. Somebody's going to have an accident and run into them in their car or something of that nature. But brothers and sisters, I've seen cars run into people's houses while people are sitting in the living room. So your faith has to say whatever the devil has for me, God will take care of me. There are a lot of different fears in the natural. Now, let me just name some. Speaking before a group of people. A lot of people fear height. Fear climbing up on high ladders on top of roofs and different things. A lot of people fear bugs and insects. A lot of people fear financial problems. A lot of people fear water, deep water, especially if you can't swim like me. A lot of people fear diseases. A lot of people fear death. Some people fear flying, getting on the plane, going different places. Loneliness. Some people fear animals like dogs. and I've seen people fear cats. Driving, riding in a car. Fear the dark. Sleep with the light on all night. So, brothers and sisters, there are different things that cause people 
It's a fear. But when it comes to God and your faith, your fear should not overshadow your faith in God. And a lot of times those, those fears that I mentioned, they actually are the result of misinformation. You know, people tell you, my grandmother uh, actually feared flying. And uh, she told me, the Bible said, lo, I'm with you always. And uh, of course, you know, that's taken out of context, but that's what she would say. She told me that if God meant for me to fly, he'd give me wings. And so I said that to say this, you do not have to fear anything when you have faith in God. Your faith to believe, your faith to come to the conclusion that it shall come, it shall happen. I, I, I remember the first time we went to Atlanta for a convention. The elevator is on the outside of uh, the tower going up where you go to your room and you go 30 some floors and you have to ride up on the outside of that elevator in a bubble. And at first, I was kind of shaky about it. And, and the Lord spoke to me and said, if it was gonna fall, it could fall from the outside or from the, from the inside. It could fall from either place. So fear is actually false education, a false evidence appearing real, F-E-A-R. False evidence appearing real real. Fear makes the big bad wolf bigger than what he is. Fear makes man believe the worst of everything. Fear makes you feel that what can go wrong will go wrong. It exaggerates whatever the thing is that you have confronted with. Fear will magnify it. It'll make it bigger. But you must believe, brothers and sisters, that faith will take me through whatever I'm going through. The person that fears death cannot really enjoy life because they're afraid of dying. Brothers and sisters, you can't walk around in fear and still have faith in God. You must believe God. You must have confidence in God. Your faith should overshadow, should overrule your fear. I remember when I was in college, there was, there, there was one particular guy. He was afraid. I mean, he wouldn't go outside. He wouldn't do anything. Well, I mean, it's, it's good to study. Don't get me wrong. I, I, all of us, if you're going to make it in college, you got to study. But he would not do anything. He'd leave class. He goes straight to the dorm and he would study from the time he got to the dorm until he went to bed. He'd wake up in the middle of the night and study some more and then get up the next morning before he go to school and study some more because he had a fear of failing. And guess what? He's one of his classes, I believe it was chemistry that when he failed chemistry and, and, and it, it almost devastated him. And this is what I told him. Nothing wrong with studying, but don't have confidence in God, first of all, when you're studying, that many things God would bring back to your remembrance when you study, when you look at it, when you read it. God can bring it back to you rather than trying to depend on your own intellect to do it. So we must have the type of faith that overrules fear that overrules fear, that goes farther than fear. So therefore, we must allow faith to talk. We must allow it to talk. We must say it. I often read Psalm number 103. And I, I'm gonna read it because it, it really, it really, it, it really to me, it tells us of the blessings of God but it tells us if we have faith in God, what it will do. One thing, another scripture I love in the book of Psalms, it says, uh, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. And so uh, the more we speak faith about God and about his greatness 
and, and, and about magnifying him, making him bigger. The more we speak it, the larger he appears. There's nothing like a great big God in our lives. Psalm 103, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. When we allow our faith to speak of the blessings of God, that he has bestowed his people or toward his people, it could go on and on and on and on. You know, we used to sing a song, count your blessings, name them one by one. Brothers and sisters, we would be all day and all night counting about the blessings of God. And I know that God wants us, he wants to hear us talk faith. He wants to hear our ears should always speak the things of God. Our ears should always talk the blessings of God. The boldness that we should have when we talk about the boldness of, of as Peter had in Acts the fourth chapter uh, uh, in verse number 13. You remember in verse number 13? Uh, uh, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled, and they looked. They took knowledge of them, that they had been with Jesus. Brothers and sisters, when you have the kind of faith that you believe God, it will it will cause you to speak in the future about what God is going to do. It will cause you to say, even if you are hurting in your body, that by faith I am healed. Do you know that speaking boldness is one of the identities of having faith? You can't be hollering nobody knows the trouble I've seen. You can't holler, pull me, oh Lord, pull, pull me. You can't be hollering that when it comes to your faith in God. You got to speak boldly. I believe God. Pain in my arm, I believe God. Pain in my head, I believe God. We must have the kind of faith in God that we learn to speak it boldly and by faith. Numbers the 13 in verse number 30. 12 spies were sent out to spy out the land. 10 come back and say, we can't do it. Two come back and say, we're well able. Listen to what Caleb says in, in Numbers 13 and 30. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. Now, the other men, they saw giants like grasshoppers. But brothers and sisters, when we learn to look at God rather than looking at our circumstances, we can say we are well able to possess it. We are well able to overcome this. We are well able to go through this. Numbers 14, verse number 7, And they spake unto the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which is we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which floweth with milk and honey. Listen to how he's talking. He's talking faithfully. He's talking by faith. He's believing God. It's, 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 it's amazing what 10 can see and what 2 can see by faith. Believing God causes you to speak those things that be not as though they are. To saying that whatever I say, I believe that God 
is going to do it. Faith can not only talk to talk, faith can walk to walk. Whatever the Lord gives you to say by faith, say it. Because it's actually the, uh, uh, the foundation to the ability of God. God can, God will, but we must believe that he can and he will. We've got to speak it. This world was formed on a spoken word. The Lord says he spoke. You look in the book of Genesis, the first chapter, verse number three, he spoke and said, let there be light. And there was light. It all happened on the speaking of the word. And since the word was, the world was formed with words, that means we got to speak life, speak the word of God. We got to speak the word into the world to bring changes. Let me say that again. Since the world was formed with the word, let there be, and there was. We must speak the word in order to accomplish the things that need to be done in the word. When he want a firmament, firmament, he spoke it. When he made man, he spoke it. Genesis 1 and 9, he said, uh, let the waters uh, under the heavens be gathered together uh, unto the place and let the dry land appear. And when he said all of that, the Bible says it was so. So when we speak by faith, when we say it, when we say it without a shadow of a doubt, believing God, tonight I challenge you. I have no idea what you're dealing with. But if you're like me, there's some things you're praying for. And I ask God every day, the way to build your faith is through the word of God. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by uh, the word of God. Brothers and sisters, it's important that you learn the word of God, but then learn to speak the word of God rather than speak what you heard somebody else say. Sometimes people say things you don't know why they said them. Learn how to speak God's word and speak it with power. Proverbs 18 and 21, death and life are where? Are in the power of the tongue. It's a tremendous blessing when our ears only hear that which will build our faith, fortify our faith. It's a blessing when we can talk faith rather than doubt. And I teach this, a lot of people don't like it. Try not to associate yourself with doubters. That people never have anything good to say. Never have anything good to say. Job talked about them. Job talked about those miserable comforters that came and just sat there and just stared at him, trying to see him waste away. But God turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. My brothers and sisters, allow your faith to speak. Allow your faith to talk. Allow your faith to be manifested. So therefore, we must allow God to work through faith. Not only, brothers and sisters, not only will faith speak the things that it sees, but it will speak the things that you cannot see. Now faith is the substance of things that are hoped for and the evidence of things that are not seen. When faith sees it, the mouth speaks it, and the evidence appears there, we must allow our faith to talk. Let it talk. Let it talk. I am healed. He is healed. I am blessed. They are blessed. 
I am saved. I believe they're saved. Speak over your children. I command you that you will live right. You will walk up right. God bless you tonight. Let your faith work. Let, let your ears hear your voice speak faith. Whatever it is, say it. Speak it by faith. In the name of Jesus. Father, bless your people tonight. Look on those that are sick and afflicted again tonight, God. And we're speaking your word. You sent your word and healed them. By your stripes we're healed. And we thank you tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Sunday morning, see you then. God bless you. In Jesus' name, have a wonderful night. God bless you.